There's the baby. <laughs> it's very active. Oh, there it goes. I don't know if you can see it moving my hand. There's a nice little hard lump right here. Yeah, why don't you come out of there? Okay, it's nice world out here. You need to come out there and give your mama a break, okay? Yeah, well, baby's doing good, huh? You just need to hurry up and go into labor, dear. My milk cow clover has been down and is actually having a fairly difficult pregnancy. At least it's difficult on me. I'm not sure if it is on her yet at this point. So we are going to be grabbing the Brussels sprouts that I've already harvested. Just got the stalks here with the leaves to take her for a treat. And I thought I just would walk you through what's been happening with her progress or lack thereof, I feel, this far, and what the daily care is looking like and what you kind of need to watch out for when you have a dairy cow that is getting ready to give birth. Because we have had cows our entire, my entire life. I grew up on a cattle farm. So we've had beef cattle, and then my husband and I have had our herd for, oh gosh, like 15 years. This is my first dairy cow, and I feel like I have never owned a cow and I know nothing about cows walking with a dairy cow in comparison to the beef cattle. So in case you are thinking of getting a dairy animal, and these are definitely not going to go through that stock. I'm going to have to get my bigger lopers out. I'm going to walk you through that and what it looks like, what we're watching for, and bring you along for the experience. So clover was due with the cow's gestation period when she was bred at the end of March, her earliest due date would have been December 20th, and she won't technically be overdue until January 7th. So Christmas Eve morning, we came out to find that Clover had gotten through the gate area and wedged herself into this shed and was laying down, and she couldn't get herself up. So she didn't have enough room once she got in here to be able to turn herself around. And when cows, especially as large as she is being pregnant, uh, they need to have about a foot of space in front of their head because they kind of do a rocking motion to get themselves up. And she just didn't have the space. So we had to dismantle, you will see now that there's no front on this shed because we had to take it all off in order to give her the head space to rock herself up. So after she did that and got herself out of the shed, we redid the gate system to keep her out of it because apparently she does not know the size of her body and that she's not fitting well. So we got her out of there and then she was up for about 36 hours. So she was up all Christmas Eve day, Christmas Eve night, Christmas day. And then we decided we were gonna let her go in at night into this big shed, which we have ready. And this is supposed to be her birthing shed. And then after she has the calf, this is where we'll put the calf while we do calf shearing, etc. So you can see this is a much, much larger, plenty of room for her. She can get all the way back in there out of the elements. Nice place to be if you are a cow. Well, then she laid down this. We just um, the day after Christmas, actually, um, and wouldn't get up. So she was in here for 24 hours. Um, we tried using a webbing strap with a tractor to just help her get up. That did not work. Um, I was on the phone with the vet. We thought maybe she got milk fever early, which milk fever, typically a dairy cow will get milk fever right after they give birth and they bag up. And it's because they get so much, they do, their body creates so much milk so fast. They, they deplete their system of calcium and if you don't give them supplemental calcium and you don't catch it in time, they actually can die from it. So very different than beef cattle. So I was on the phone with the vet because of course it's like eight o'clock at night now. And he's like, well, she could, maybe she's got milk fever early and that's why she can't stand up. So go ahead and give her a bolus. So we have, uh, it's, you, it's like a capsule, big paste type thing that has calcium in it and you have this gun and you just put it at the back of their throat uh, so that they swallow it. So we gave her that, and that typically takes about an hour uh, with the one that I had, if that was what the problem is, to kick in. So we stayed out here for an hour, 
seeing if that was going to fix everything and it didn't and so i just told the vet i said well i'll call you in the morning if she hasn't gotten up and we'll look at our options of either inducing labor um he said you know possibly a c-section which not really wanting to do any of those routes but you know we'll see where it is the danger is if a cow is down too long they can get compartmental syndrome um, where you know things start to go to sleep and they get blood supply shut off and it, it can be a big deal when a cow is down for too long it can be pretty dangerous so uh, the next morning I came out because it had been 24 hours to check on her and she was still down and our power went out so when the power goes out our well goes out and I'm obviously having to bring her water so I went in the house and my husband got the generator going so that we could fill up the buckets and so I get my five gallon buckets filled with water and I'm you know trying to walk through at this point we still had a lot of snow and ice to bring her water and I turn this corner with my two buckets of water and that cow is standing here at the gate just like she had been able to get up all the time and was just taking a break. She's like, I'm, you know, at the end of my pregnancy, you bring me food and water. I don't want to stand up. So I let the, you know, open the gate and she kind of little stiff legged, but she walks all the way out to where the other cows are and was just fine. And I don't know if you've if you've had kids and you've ever been in a store somewhere and you tell your kids to stay right by you, like you always stay in my sight, you don't, you know, all the things. And then you look around, you can't find your kids and you start to panic and you start yelling for them. And then you find them hiding underneath a clothes rack, may or may not have happened. And you're so happy that nobody kidnapped them that you wanna kiss them. But there's this part of you that's so mad at them for putting you through that stress and that they didn't listen that you wanna spank them and kiss them at the same time. That's kind of how I felt with Clover. I'm like, you stressed me out to the max cow and you could have got up this whole time. So she was out and she's kind of been doing this for the whole rest of the week. She'll lay down for about 18 to 24 hours and then she just gets up like, I just don't want to stand. So here is Miss Clover who is laying down right now. And yesterday she was starting to pass mucus and is showing signs of dilation. So I thought she was going to go into labor and have the calf. I've been out here checking her like every hour. As you can see, Clover is not the only one that likes the Brussels sprouts. The rest of the herd does. However, Clover is the only one who is actually tame. Our beef cattle are not uh, pettable, but they have discovered that as much as I've been out here with Clover and feeding her, that oftentimes I bring nice things to eat. So we're slowly becoming more friends. But it also means that I have to stand out here if it's something that I want Clover to eat and not necessarily bring enough for all of them. They're fine about the hay, but they've been over here taking snitches. You go along. Thank you. Taking snitches of her Brussels sprouts. So sorry, Clover, you got some Brussels sprouts, but not a ton, huh? This video is sponsored by Azure Standard. So Azure Standard not only has a plethora of pantry and food items, but they also can help you take care of your livestock needs. These alfalfa pellets are what we use when we are milking clover. So every time she goes into the milking parlor, she gets some of these alfalfa pellets. And because she has been down and is at the very tail end of her pregnancy and we only fit, feed grass hay, we have haylage right now, the vet recommended giving her some of these alfalfa pellets just to make sure that she is getting all of her nutrient needs met. So we are going to take this out to her right now. Clover loves her alfalfa pellets. And for us, we do grass fed. We don't feed any grain because it doesn't take very much grain for an animal to go from producing omega-3s, which is what you get when you're doing grass fed, and you give them too much grain and it's going to start producing omega-6s. It's also important for me to make sure that she doesn't get too much grain. In fact, we don't do any grain in order to keep her rumen operating and pH levels and everything exactly as should be. So we supplement with this. And the other thing is alfalfa can actually be, unfortunately, a genetically, genetically modified crop. So I love that Azure's alfalfa pellets are certified organic, and that means that they are non-GMO. So I choose to use these rather than buy bales of alfalfa just because I don't know that the bales of alfalfa that our feed store carries, if they are genetically modified or not. And I would rather her be on 
predominantly grass and hay from grass during the winter months, but this does help provide her with the extra nutrition. Huh, some good stuff. There's some good stuff, huh, girl? Yeah. She's able to get up on her front, her front legs there and her knees, which is good because she's upright. If they're laying down prone on their side, that's when things can get really dire. She, we don't actually know how old she is. When we first said we were going to bring her home, the people that had her told us she was eight. And then when we went to pick her up, they told us, no, we actually think she's closer to 10. I don't actually know how old she is. Um, but I think that this will probably be her last calf. I don't think that we will breed her back because I think she's actually quite a bit older. And with her bag, which is almost all the way full... And the weight of the baby, I just don't think that she's able to get up. So I'm kind of giving her through today. And if she does not go into labor and actually have the calf, then we're going to have to have the vet come out tomorrow and induce her. Because by tomorrow, it'll be three days that she's down. And I'm not really comfortable leaving her down any longer than that. So I've just been bringing her water out and coming and checking on her. And I need to get her some fresh hay. Huh? Because you've kind of been making a mess of things. Yeah, you're kind of making a mess of things. And we have some friends that have a hip clamp. And so after, if she doesn't go into labor today, uh, tomorrow when I can uh, see if the vet can come out, um, I may go and get that hip clamp. And basically what it is, is it's a large uh, clamp and it hooks onto their hips. And then you hook it onto a tractor and it allows you to just help them hoist up their back end because that's where she has trouble. She can get her front end up, but she just can't seem to get her back legs all the way up. And in pregnancy too, especially this far, they can also sometimes pinch a nerve. So I don't know if this is a nerve issue. Like there's a lot of issues that it could be. Um, but her nose is warm, her ears are warm. And if they're cold, those are signs that it's milk fever and it's a calcium, uh, more of a metabolic issue. And she's not really showing any of those signs. So anyways, it's been very interesting. Um, I have never been more in anticipation of a cow having a calf and <laughs> coming out and taking pictures. So I will be keeping you updated on Clover's progress and I really hope that the next video that I get to do of her is showing a beautiful, healthy heifer calf that can then be trained to be the next milk cow. You can try to get up, huh? You're just changing position, yeah? You could scooch into some drier area and bring some more, more hay in for bedding, yeah. So this is just the real life ish of dealing with livestock um, and so it's been a very long week of pretty much hourly checks and just continuing to bring her water and hay and checking up on her but you're worth it huh yeah you're a good girl so i hope it has a happy ending <laughs>